So radiation therapy is a very useful tool in the toolbox for managing uh, non-melanoma skin cancers. There are a couple of roles that uh, radiation therapy can play, and that is in the post-operative setting to prevent recurrence, in the definitive setting when you can't operate, and where there's an issue with field cancerization issues where you're trying to control an entire area uh, where many, many tumours and precancerous changes are, are popping up. It's really a, an option to be considered uh, by skin practitioners when you're facing a, a, a couple of challenges that local therapies that might be used, whether it's um, surgery, epidex or topical therapies, are becoming ineffective or not solving the problem where those therapies are creating cosmetic or functional challenges for the patient. For example, surgery on the nose or the ear. Or what I think of as fatigue, treatment fatigue is setting in where patients are getting tired of uh, repeated interventions and looking for an alternative solution, or that the doctor is looking for an alternative solution to help the patient. So GPs play a vital role in selecting the right patients to consider for radiation therapy, and often uh, it's thought that they have to refer on to other specialists that then refer on to radiation oncologists. And radiation oncologists are the doctors in Australia that, pr that provide radiation therapy. GPs can refer directly. Often we find referrals come in for an educational consult on what radiotherapy can offer as an option, either now or in the future. We find many GPs are quite well connected, and if not, should be connected with their local radiation oncologists, usually to discuss um, pathology or histology and, and have a discussion whether or not radiotherapy is appropriate and then refer on. At the end of the day, if there are certain guidelines that uh, provide support for when radiation therapy is indicated, particularly after a tumour has been excised. And we tend to refer to that guideline as uh, the EVIQ guidelines, which is an Australian guideline written by Australian radiation oncologists that are reviewed every two years. And that gives GPs a point of care tool to have a look and say, should we be referring on? But it's important that GPs can refer directly to radiation oncologists for that opinion.